You have identified a communication gap that text messaging should fill and confirm this by doing audience research. You've set aside a budget and carefully selected the right vendor. You've figured out how to get subscribers to opt in and how you're going to market your program. It's time to write your messages. We're going to tell you about a recent pilot we conducted that will illustrate some of the messaging challenges you might come across. This is an image of a mass vaccination clinic our department held to provide free flu shots to our residents. Some children needed two doses of flu vaccine. We knew that there would be a challenge in getting kids to return for the second dose. We could have handed out a reminder card, but we would have run the risk of it being thrown out or forgotten. Calling or sending a letter was just too expensive. We thought that text messaging would be an ideal way to remind parents when it was time to get their child a second dose of vaccine. It would be timely and personalized for their child. We wanted to minimize the number of texts we'd send parents while making the message as clear as possible. Here's the message we wrote. It's been 30 days since your child got their flu shot at the health clinic. Here's your reminder to get them a second dose of vaccine. Call your doctor or pharmacy for an appointment today. We liked this message because it was personalized and highly relevant to the parent. It was clear what the purpose of the message was, and the action step is also clear. It all fits on one text message. We checked with our compliance and legal office just to make sure it was okay to send. We were advised not to send the message because of the federal HIPAA law, which protects people's health care information. The problem was that we wanted to text protected health information, or PHI. The reason it was PHI is because the message mentioned a second dose of flu vaccine, implying that the child had received a first dose of vaccine, which is information about a child's health care. Sending protected health information over text messaging is unlikely to be a problem from the privacy standpoint under HIPAA, as long as the parent agreed to receive such private information. SMS is not mentioned specifically in HIPAA. However, text messages may be considered electronic, and HIPAA has special rules for the transmission of electronic information. One concern with electronic transmission of PHI is that it could be intercepted by an unauthorized person. Currently, there are many unknowns about the security of SMS technology. One thing is sure, SMS is not 100% secure. Risks of interception might take place anywhere along the pathway, from when the message is sent to when it's read by the end user. If a healthcare provider wants to send PHI via text, the security rule under HIPAA requires analysis of the risks of interception and other potential problems associated with electronic transmission. In order to send PHI via SMS, an agency would have to do a thorough analysis of all the risks and come up with reasonable and appropriate alternatives to mitigate them. It may be up to individual agencies to determine what are reasonable and appropriate mitigation alternatives. Compliance and risk managers are likely going to make conservative judgments every time because their job is to protect your agency from liability but policymakers will likely weigh the public health benefits from the potential risks of liability. We rewrote the message for our second dose pilot to get rid of the protected health information. We developed a two-message solution. The first message read, Keep your children protected against the flu. Some kids need a second dose 30 days after they receive their first flu shot. This first message was designed to trigger parents to think about the flu vaccine. The second message said, Do you remember asking for a text message reminder for flu vaccine? It's time. Call a doctor or pharmacy to schedule an appointment. This second message prompted parents to remember that they had wanted a text message reminder. In our opinion, the two-message solution isn't as good as the original because it isn't personalized. It's less clear and could annoy some parents because we sent two messages when one would have been better. Remember, whenever possible, send fewer, more customized messages. Clearer messages will enhance your credibility and make it more likely that the recipient will act. So how did it go? At our mass vaccination clinic, 84% of parents whose children needed a second dose of vaccine opted in to receive text messages from us. We believe this high opt-in rate shows that we provided a service that people wanted and valued. It was easy and inexpensive for us to provide the service. We had an overwhelming number of parents sign up to receive a second dose text reminder on their phones. Let's hear from them about why they signed up. Uh, 
I signed up for the second dose text because my schedule is so hectic and it was during the holidays and I didn't really want to have to remember another thing. So I signed up for it and I knew I wouldn't have to open any mail. It was so convenient. When I came back from vacation, I got a reminder on my phone and I was able to make a call right from there um, and sign you up for your second dose. Mi hijo va a la guardería y siempre hay niños enfermos ahí. Para mí es muy importante saber que mi hijo está protegido. Recibir los mensajes de texto fue súper sencillo y el costo fue nada. Yo lo haría otra vez. You know, I'm already getting text reminders from my doctor and my dentist, so for me it was a no-brainer to get text reminders from public health also. It's a great customer service and I'm pretty confident that I'm not going to get any spam from them, so I would definitely sign up again. In the event of a large-scale public health disaster such as an anthrax attack, our agency will be even more prepared to help people stay on track with their medicines and ultimately will make our community healthier and safer. This is the power of text. So what can you do to get started? We think it starts with communication and audience. Find out what communication gaps you have and then determine whether text messaging can fill those gaps. Be prepared to work with leadership in your department because text messaging is relatively new to public health delivery. Like all communication methods, there are costs, so don't waste resources by starting out too big. Finally, copy down the website address we'll share with you at the end of this video. Please contact us and we'd be happy to help where we can. Let's hear one last voice from the field. Richard Adler at the Institute of the Future sums up why you should think about mobile technology and SMS text messaging to improve and protect health. Well, there's a couple of reasons why mobile is a powerful platform for improving health. First of all, is its ubiquity. Virtually every adult in the United States and about half of the population of the entire world now have a cell phone and there's no other technology in history that has ever been as far reaching. Um, and in addition to that, not only does everybody have it, but cell phones have a couple of characteristics which make them particularly appealing for health applications. One is that they are personal. People have individual cell phones that they're very attached to. They carry them with them all of the time. And so they're connected to the greater world. And um, so if you want to intervene with people, you want to communicate with them in their lives at key moments, the cell phone is really the only technology that lets you do that. And finally, these devices are getting more and more intelligent. About, I think, 25% of Americans now have what are known as smartphones, Androids and uh, uh, iPhones and uh, uh, Blackberry type phones. And, these really let you deliver more sophisticated applications. So you put all those together, you really have a very, a very interesting and powerful new, new way to reach uh, people in the world. The most powerful way of delivering a mobile application today, or the most effective, is by using simple text messaging. I mean, the, the uh, fancier smartphone apps uh, may look, you know, kind of uh, sexier, but uh, you can, the, the great power of uh, texting is that it's very simple to do and it reaches 95% of all phones. If you're de de developing an application for smartphone, you have to worry about, does somebody have an iPhone? Do they have an Android? Do they have a Blackberry? In the case of SMS, virtually every phone is capable of receiving them. And I think the key, the key thing to keep in mind with all of this is it's really not about technology, it's about people. You really want to look at the population you want to reach, the message that you want to deliver to them, and then figure out the, the best medium. And mobile, I think increasingly, is it should be one of those uh, alternatives. So that's Texting 101. We think mobile technology is a very powerful tool to connect communities with the information they need to promote and protect their health. And while no one communication method is working for everybody, text messaging is right for many. It can be a low-cost, effective, and efficient way to deliver public health emergency information, as well as everyday health programming. We hope you've learned a lot from this video. Feel free to contact us at our website. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.